Is love God's most important attribute? Hello and welcome to another episode of Dive Deep a la carte with Lance Phelps. Today I'm going to be continuing my look at John Frame's awesome book, No Other God, A Response to Open Theism. And today we're going to be checking out chapter four. And in chapter four, he deals with the issue of love. Is love God's most fundamental and most important attribute? Now we see this idea take root in multiple different theologies that uh, go in and actually deny biblical doctrine, such as hell, for instance. In Rob Bell's Love Wins, he defines love as the most important attribute, and through that, he starts to interpret the Bible through that lens of God's being mo- of love being God's most important attribute. And that's actually what the open theist does as well. They they all, most oftentimes, not all, but most of them define love as absolutely the pinnacle of God's attributes to which everything else must be subservient. But to do so is not unusual in the theological realm. Actually, it's somewhat unusual to define all the attributes as having an equal stay or an equal position in the metaphysical being of God. But I get ahead of myself. Frame does a good job of outlining the various different positions that, uh, that you know, exacerbate the various different qualities of God. For instance, for Duns Scotus, God's fundamental attribute is his infinity. For some Reformed theologians, aseity. For Cornelius Janison, his veracity. For Saint Sirion, omnipotence. For the Socinians, will. For Hegel, reason. For Jacobi, Lotz, Donner, and others, sorry, Donner, and others, absolute personality. For Rachel, love. Among theologians since Bevick's day, we can note Barth's emphasis on love and freedom, Berber's and Bruner's person, and Moltmann's fraternity. But can you prove from Scripture that love is the most fundamental aspect of God? As the open theists claim, it's the most important aspect. Can you prove this from Scripture? Well, it actually it fall, it kind of falls flat when you do a thorough analysis of the Scripture. Well, first and foremost, holiness is a much bigger candidate for this position. Now, I'm not going to say that holiness is his central attribute, but nevertheless, holiness is the only thing that is repeated thrice fold. It's the only thing that is repeated three times for emphasis in the Old Testament literature. In Hebraic thought, if you repeated something three times, then effectively you were saying it to an incredibly intense degree. So holiness would then therefore be a much more likely candidate for his uh, for his fundamental attribute. But the problem is that that doesn't resonate with modern audiences like love does. When you say that God's most fundamental attribute is love, you are actually resonating with the modern audience who, when hearing that God is also wrath or that God has wrath and that he is righteous and his righteousness kindles a deep wrath towards any sin, that doesn't resonate at all with a modern Western audience. So it's hard to get that past. But when we go in and we examine the Bible, we see God is described more as being Lord, as being the 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 almighty creator the sovereign you know uh the sovereign jealous god as th- then he is being described as love now he is described as being love in first john he got we are told that god is love but and again we are also told that god is light and god is righteousness and there's all these different things or i should say righteous not righteousness um and there's there's there are those traits but frame here argues that the idea of one central attribute to sort of trump all the others is erroneous in because it of course stuffs the other one down when there's no biblical evidence to do so. In fact, what we should be doing, as Frame argues, is that we should be seeing them as perspectival to his being. So when we look at uh, love, we have to also look at righteousness, and we have to see love through his righteousness and his righteousness through his love. And we have to see the various different attributes, his holiness, because he is thrice holy. He's holy, holy, holy. We've got to see his love through the lens of his holiness and also his holiness through the lens of his love. So Frame says, 
To establish the open theist conclusion, one would have to show not only that love is important, not only that it is perspectively central, as in the above discussion, but that it is somehow more important to the to the biblical revelation than each of the other candidates. To my knowledge, no open theist has even begun that difficult task. Basically, in this chapter, he goes through and demonstrates that the open theist just simply states love as the most important attribute, but never actually proves it from a biblical standpoint. Now, it's one thing to just say that it is the most important attribute, but it's another thing altogether to actually prove that it is the most important attribute. And John Frame says they simply have not done that. John Frame gives an example of this situation. Richard Rice goes through and he summarizes the passages for God's love, and he shows that God's love is incredibly important. But the problem is that he didn't actually, or I should just go ahead and quote him, but Rice wants to argue more, that it is important, or more important than all of God's other attributes, even more fundamental. He says, love is the essence of the divine reality, the basic source from which all of, at- of God's attributes arise. But never does he actually present any comparisons between love and any other divine attributes. Just to show the importance and centrality of love in Scripture does not justify that conclusion. One must also show that other attributes are less important and less central than love. But Rice's discussion never touches on any divine attribute other than love. Next, John moves to the to love and more of its content or what it is, its sensitivity, its vulnerability. Its, and, and the open theist argues that, that love must be open to uh, being heard. It must be open to the future. And of course, they're interpreting this from a libertarian framework. And they, they're, they're saying that love must be vulnerable. And a god of the traditional theism, the god that is sovereign, the god that cannot be harmed by his creation, is a God that can't be vulnerable, they argue. But this is kind of a narrow view of of traditional theism. The point is that God himself can and does actually, in some senses, become harmed by his creation. Not, of course, to, you know, strike at the very core of his being. But nevertheless, maybe maybe in one sense he does. Of course, it doesn't go as far as open theists want it to go. But Jesus Christ himself came down to this earth and he died on a cross. So while, yes, that doesn't kill God in the truest sense of God is completely dead, his metaphysical being is just gone, and his deity never was, was never, you know, vanquished, his, in one sense, he did die. He was a human being, and he is, his human flesh ceased to operate, which means that he died. And in that way, he is vulnerable. And furthermore, the, uh, the open theist tried to claim that the uh, traditional theist position has a God that is completely unresponsive to his creation, because, of course, he, he is said to be sort of so distant that the, he, he can't feel or understand our position. But that doesn't take into account the fact that the Bible actually tells us that he can sympathize with us and that he is there for us. He effectively loves with us. And the love that God shows us is a love of sensitivity. And just because God is sovereign does not mean that that love cannot be sensitive and vulnerable to his creation. I'll end with this quote. But is it really impossible to recognize love in someone who is too strong to be defeated? On the contrary, do we not desire in a lover precisely the kind of strength that will not fail to support us, the kind of love that will hold us fast, from which nothing can separate us? Certainly that is the nature of God's love in Scripture. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, Romans 8.35. Nobody can pluck us out of his hand, John 10, 28 through 29. God's love is a sovereign love, not in the final analysis, a vulnerable love. 